All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, thank you all for joining. My name is Michael Blazik. I'm the marketing manager here at Benchmark Tool and Supply. Um, today, we're going to go going to go over LPS um, and when satellites are not an option. Um, just some quick housekeeping rules. I did mute everybody, so if you do have questions, um, please type them into the comment box. We're going to do the best we can at the end to get to all the questions. I know everybody is definitely webinar out at this point, so we're going to keep it to around 10 to 15 minutes, give you guys enough information to be dangerous. Um, and if you guys want to follow up with one of your sales reps or benchmark in particular, that contact information is going to be at the end of the presentation. Um, with me today is Thomas Etheridge. He's our training leader here at Benchmark. Um, he's been doing training with Benchmark for about four years. Um, pretty much all of it has been in the field, so super knowledgeable. I'm definitely glad to have him on board. Uh, with that, I'm going to dive right in here. Just a quick history on Benchmark. Uh, we opened for business in 2004. Uh, we are mainly a surveying, construction, and engineering supply company, um, mostly technology-based, and we do uh, also provide drone solutions as well. Uh, we are a master top con dealer for North Carolina and Virginia. We have been ranked as one of the top sellers consecutively since 2006. Um, we do have five locations strategically placed throughout Virginia and North Carolina to get to you as quick as possible. We've got our North Carolina locations are Raleigh and Concord. Um, our Virginia ones are Chesapeake, Ashland, and our newest one is in Roanoke, Virginia. All of our sites are fully staffed with service, sales, and training. Uh, with that, I'm gonna, we're going to dive right in. Again, we're not trying to waste y'all's time. We're going to get right to the material. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Thomas. He'll do a quick introduction, and we'll dive right in. Thanks, Mike. Like you said, my name's Thomas. I've been with Benchmark for almost four years now. Been out in the field on plenty of different job sites. I uh, got to enjoy, learn a lot about what you guys do, kind of marrying the top con aspect of technology and what construction guys need and pretty much almost require today. It being machine control, albeit GBS or LPS, which we're going over today. Uh, kind of a quick segue into this is what is LPS? So LPS starts out, it's local positioning system. What that means is you're using the benefits of a total station and the line of sight tracking, which allows us to completely cut out the sky. If we don't have good reception with our radio board and our GPS, or maybe we're in some high traffic areas, high density areas where GPS satellites just struggle to get to us. And we're constantly fighting that battle of, you know, how close to the trees are we? Oh, there's a four story building next to us and it just can't seem to work. What we can do is actually bring in an LPS system which can go straight onto a machine that's already got GPS, just requires a few extra bits and pieces here and there. And then that total station is what's gonna drive it or drag us to the ground and have us set up to run that job site. What's required is just two points. So everyone's used to having control points set on a job site from a surveyor for their GPS localization. So you've probably got four or five around of, with a GT, all you need is two of those points within line of sight of that instrument. What you're gonna do with that instrument is set up on those two points, locate that machine onto the job site, kind of where it gets its local positioning system. Once it's on that job site and localized to the site with those two nails, we'll actually turn it to the machine and get it to start tracking that prism on the system. From there, all they're doing is just like they're used to with 3DMC, they're just not getting satellites to track themselves, they're just using that total station. Um, Now the benefits and why should I use LPS? Well, just like GPS, if you're just using a base station, we all know that the network can get us maybe within two tenths of vertical accuracy. A base station on the job site can bring that two tenths of vertical error down to about two hundredths plus or minus. But what a total station does is a survey grade instrument that surveyors themselves use to set, you know, bridges, piles, and anything, you know, even your own control points are done with a total station. So the very utmost accuracy is required. That's why LPS is a good tool. When GPS is unreliable, like I alluded to in the first slide, if you're in areas where buildings are already up or you're working in narrow corridors or best case scenario is a greenway where you're going through trees to build out uh, path, pathways or roadways and there's no way the satellites can reach you and the LPS is almost your only option. Other uses for LPS, is since you can get close to trees, some job sites require tree protection zones. And if you're working in natural waterways or stream restoration where there is a tree protection zone and what we don't wanna do is cut down too many, we wanna leave as many as possible. That LPS allows us to guide ourselves around the site 
perfectly and as accurately as possible without the issue of, you know, this tree's in the way, so we got to get rid of it just to run GPS. No longer do we have to do that. And then here's some few examples of, you know, the LPS versus GPS. If, you know, going back to GPS and machine control. So what you're using is either a base station or run off the network to receive your corrections. Now what that needs is satellites to that machine. It has to get radio corrections from the base receiver on the job site, or it has to have a modem installed if you're running off the network. All three different ways can cause interference and get that machine to not get corrections. Now, one thing with LPS, all you have to have is that total station on site with two points around it that it can bench in on. Now, what typical questions is, how far away from the instrument can I run LPS? So an LPS machine is ran with a total station. Those total stations can run thousands of feet before they lose accuracy. So you can go two feet in front of the machine or you can go uh, 1,500, 2,000 feet in front of the machine. But the benefit of it is where GPS kind of fails and falters near bridges, under thick canopy, and even near power lines that cause mag magnetic interference. All that prism is doing is getting tracked by that laser from that total station that allows it to keep its fix. So no more are you running out of radio corrections or not getting enough satellites, the LPS, as long as I can see the machine, the machine's gonna go green. It's gonna be able to track and grade correctly. Uh, the next question is, you know, what is needed? What do I need on my machine or what do I need around my job site? Typically the best case scenario when you're running LPS is you're gonna set that instrument above the machine. So the one downside of GPS versus LPS is if you can't see the prism, the total station can't track it, and then you can't get tracked on the job site. What a lot of people fail to realize is if you set that total station higher above the cab of that machine, very little or few and far between are there times where that machine blocks the line of sight of that laser. If you keep it in a position above the machine, you'll be able to drive that machine 360 degrees and rotate it all you want, and it won't lose that prism. When people set that instrument down below or at the same level of that machine, as soon as they start driving past it, the laser gets blocked by the cab of the machine, or if it's on an excavator, the boom can actually interfere with it and it'll lose its sight for just a split second, which can cause it to go in and out. Uh, other things you need on it, not just that total station and prism, uh, 3DMC software, there's a, if you're already running GPS, that's already on there. It might just be a few options that need to be unlocked. And then one single board, depending on what kind of radio you're already using or control box you already have. So as far as going from machine control to LPS, from you know from GPS to LPS, there's not much involved other than an actual instrument to run it, aka the total station instead of a base station, plus one or maybe two extra boards if need be, and then a prism on top of the machine. Hey Thomas, not to interject, we had a question come up, and I kind of want to address it now. Um, as far as what's needed. Somebody said, you know, do I need to get a whole new system if I already have GPS uh, or how do I run both at the same time? Yeah, so if you want to and you have a, say you have a motor grader or a dozer that's already running 3DMC with a, a single GPS pole, what you're able to do is install a single board for the Bluetooth module to connect to that total station inside the control box. On top of that, you actually would take that GPS receiver cup off of that pole and replace it with a prism. Um, after that, is once you have that total station, that one board and that one prism and swap it out with a GPS receiver, you just switch your machine builder. Uh, what we do is we can come out and not reinstall the machine, but put on the new parts and go into your machine builder and create a new one. Say, hey, we've got new units on this or new ways of tracking it and kind of just adjusting the measurements accordingly. And then from then on out, if you want to run LPS, you would just click you know, what we usually do is we label it the LPS machine, machine builder. And then when you run around GPS, you would simply just take that prism off, put the GPS uh, receiver back on it, plug it in with a coil cable for the GPS connection and switch your machine builder. Usually a restart connection is required sometimes. And once you hit that, you just switch between the two. So it's not a, we got to break everything down and spend 30 minutes or to an hour getting it switched back over. It's just a matter of rolling that blade forward on the motor grader, taking the prism off, putting the GPS back on it, and then switching machine builders. Cool, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, setup. Um, don't wanna harp on it too much, but this is the most important. Uh, what people are used to seeing is 
with GPS, you go and you take the rover out there and you walk around the job site and you measure every single control point. Once you've measured every single control point, you then take that localization file, install it on the machine with the project, and then now that's how the machine gets its identification of location on job site. With LPS, we don't need to localize every point first. All we need to do is put that instrument in a good location, preferably above the machine, just to avoid any issues and errors of that machine being lost. And then once we have that, we just make sure it's in the line of sight of two of those control points. So we don't need to go and search and hunt for a location where we can see all five, six, or maybe even seven or more control points. We just need to have it in a location within two and go measure those two in. The gun knows where it's at. And then once it tracks the prism, you're up and running. So there's plenty of applications to run LPS on. Uh, just like GPS, you can have GPS on paving and mill machines. You can have it on excavators, dozers, motor graders, and even box blades. Uh, box blades can even have the LSB receivers to run off of lasers. The one huge difference is LPS on a lig sheen. Uh, so some people have probably seen lig sheen for a concrete screed. It's a very, very impressive tool. I've actually been fortunate enough to go see them on two different systems and the results speak for themselves. Um, a man's able to set up his total station. He can as built with that same total station, the entire subgrade of the lot, build a finished grade surface from his data collector, load it into the lig sheen screed, and then track that same machine with that same total station he used to as built the whole parking lot, and then guide that lig sheen to pour that concrete perfectly on grade. I've seen it for, you know, single elevation flat pads and I've also seen it for sloping concrete pads and parking lots and it is a it's a pretty good joy to watch. Um, I've had guys tell me they're able to pour and scree concrete and level level it out. Uh, if I could give you a number I'd love to but just know it is a lot faster um, and when the owner of the company says it's a lot lot faster I kind of could take his word on it. I don't think he'd lie to me. Other benefits so natural and man-made GPS barriers are definitely the crux of GPS. If you're in the valley of a mountain and GPS just can't get to you because there's thousands of feet of hill to your left and your right. If you're working on a greenway and there's nothing but trees around you, even above you, and you're going through a canopy, that's another issue. And then also some people that do road work on highways, I'm sure they've seen this before, they get close to that bridge or that overpass. And for whatever reason, the GPS wants to cut out. It's not an issue. It's not magic anything that can block the satellite coverage is going to cause interference. It's going to cause you issues and errors with GPS. The beauty of LPS is it's no longer dependent upon what's above you. It's just, do I have two nails around me that I can locate to? And then if I can, as long as that gun can see the prism on top of that machine, the machine will work. Uh, other benefits of having a total station for LPS, some people don't realize is that same instrument is used for surveyors for layout. So with your software, you'd be able to do layout for your entire project with that same gun, even if you don't have a machine on site. You can go out there and stake out silt fence, boundaries, property corners, building pad elevations, go bench in on anything that's already out there and go lay the project out with a survey grade instrument. And then uh, with those total stations, just like your base station, you can set it up on permanent power. Most people, you know, they've got the gator clips with a 12 volt battery. We can also get the total station set up on permanent power because if you know we're gonna be running a seven to seven or a sun up to sundown operation because we gotta get things in before concrete comes in or paving and we're trying to meet that tight schedule, we can have that total station powered up the entire day to allow it to track that machine and get that machine going day in, day out with no downtime. And then speaking of downtime, it's another thing it can reduce. Having a total station out there to guide the machine with LPS eliminates the downtime from the GPS errors. So yes, GPS came out and it's a perfect world. Everyone loves it, the accuracy is great. We can load our model and cut fill everywhere along that surface. But there are issues where you get close to the tree line, you get close to buildings, you're working in high density areas where it just cuts out. Uh, radio waves get shortened. I've seen signals get jammed. Uh, if you're running off the network, I've even seen the network go down for a couple hours, if not a whole day. So the entire time that network was down, that GPS machine wasn't able to run. But with LPS, since you don't depend on those external factors other than can that total station see me, it's able to run sun up to sundown in that same area. Once you're done with that area, you just pick that machine up and go reset it somewhere else further down the project, still within sight of two different nails, maybe the same nails, and continue on and keep grading that way. 
All right, awesome. So like I said, guys, we're, we're keep, keeping it kind of short, give you guys the most information that we can. Um, there were some questions that popped up, um, so we're going to go and address those. If you guys have any additional ones, go ahead and pop them in that chat box. Um, the first one had to do with the first slide, Ron. I'm not going to bounce back and forth. I'll get to the comment or the uh, contact information at the end. Uh, first one was, um, is the, G, is the uh, GT the only gun that I can use? So currently Topcon's the GT1000 series is their total station they're promoting and that they sell today still for that application. Now that doesn't mean that the GT is the only gun that will ever run it. Just older systems, you know, the PS and I think the QS that has machine control on it is able to run LPS. But as far as today, purchasing the GT is the one thing you can still purchase new today that will run the LPS systems. And it has to be the 1000 series because that's got the LPS uh, software built in, not the GT500 series. All right, perfect. Uh, the next question um, was sort of around working environment. So the person asked, I know I don't necessarily work where buildings or trees are a factor. Why can't I just get away, get away with GPS? So if you are in an area where GPS does work, that's fine. Um, LPS comes into play when very, very tight grades are absolutely of the most importance. For case in point, roadways where DOT is going to come and pull string lines still and make sure you're matching within a quarter inch for your subgrade or for your stone and rock. Where GPS, even with the base station on the job site, not more than a thousand feet away from the machine, that brings your vertical error to within two hundreds. So that's plus or minus and you're already flirting with those limits of what my tolerances are for that machine and how accurate I can expect it to be. Best case scenario is if that's your if that's as tight as the machine can get running off of a base, it's best not to flirt with that uh, issue and LPS will tighten it up and make it a lot more accurate so you can hold that grade a lot tighter and just avoid the rework later and doing the same work twice, essentially. Okay. Um, so sort of on that same kind of uh, thought process, so how is GPS and LPS, or LPS, excuse me, how's LPS, uh, how does it outperform millimeter? How's it better? So millimeter is to the same effect, you know, it, it's millimeter accuracy. So it gets its name from how accurate can I be? So the accuracy against LPS, it's hand in hand. Uh, you expect the same, uh, I guess the, the same results, but the where millimeter falters is it comes to that same play of if my GPS does not work and I'm losing satellites, the millimeter will not work. So on road projects where they're using millimeter already because they've got to meet those tight specs that you know, only millimeter and LPS can give them, if millimeter starts running up to that bridge or gets up to that embankment where the slopes are too steep and I'm blocking off some of the sky, if it doesn't have enough satellites, it doesn't matter if millimeter and the laser's right next to it. If it doesn't have GPS, it can't get fixed and go green. This is what we call it on 3DMC. It's not going to go blue and give you millimeter. Whereas LPS, as long as I keep that machine within light of sight of that total station, it will always give me a fix. Cool. And again, we're not knocking GPS. GPS is great, right? LPS is just when satellites are not an option. Right. All right. Um, next question, I guess, was uh, sort of around, I guess, setting up the equipment. Um, so they want to know if I've already localized with GPS, can I use that or won't the gun know where I am? So yes and no. Um, no, because it's local, because I got to set that instrument up that moment. So when I set the instrument up and I bench in off of two nails, I'm setting it up for where its position is currently at that time with those two points within line of sight. But you can still use that localization file to your advantage because those are the control points a surveyor has set you. I would always recommend if a surveyor set control, go off of those as benchmarks. Now there's no reason why after you've come off of those two control points a surveyor set, you can't turn that total station and set yourself some more hubs. Because um, like we kind of alluded to is you want that machine to be set up above whatever machine you're setting LPS up on. So surveyors may not go up to that top of that hill and set you a nail to run LPS off of because he didn't want to set his control points on there because it didn't make sense for him. What you could do is come off of two of his benchmarks and actually transfer that point up the top of the hill and give yourself a millimeter point or an LPS point, excuse me, to run your gun off of. Okay. All right. Um, let me see here. I'm just looking through the questions. Bear with me. All 
All right, guys, it looks like that is all the questions that we've got. Uh, you'll notice up on the screen is our contact information. So if you guys want any additional information on benchmark tool and supply on LPS or GPS technology, um, we are here to help. Simply shoot us an email at info at benchmarksupply.com uh, or give us a call. Uh, we are located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Our number is 866-342-7665. Um, that's the best way to get in touch with one of our sales reps. If you don't have their direct information, call into that line. Uh, we'll be more than happy to direct you to your local sales reps. With that being said, guys, uh, we're going to get you out back to work. It's a beautiful day. I know rain's coming in the next few days, so we'll let you go. Thank you guys so much for joining. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.